Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is count of smaller numbers after self. You are given an integer array nums and you have to return a new counts array. The counts array has a property where counts i is the number of smaller elements to the right of nums i. Here at 5 we can see that there's two numbers, 2 and 1, that are less than 5, so that's 2. 2, we see 1 is uh, the only number that's going to be less than 2, so that's 1, and then so on and so forth, 1, 0. So if we were to solve this straightforwardly, we could easily do this in n squared time, right? Like for 5, 2, 6, 1, we could just do a nested uh, for loop and just check each time all the numbers right of it to see how many are less and then add that to some sort of output. But instead of doing that, um, surely there's a better way to do it. And one way we could think about this is if we moved backwards, uh, this would be 1, 1, Two, I believe. If we move backwards, we can see that the first number is always going to be zero because there's nothing to the right of it, right? So what we'll do is build up some sort of data structure to add whatever numbers are um, in here going backwards. So at one, we know that's going to be zero automatically, and at six, we'll store one somewhere and check to see how many are less than six. But that's the problem. Doing this will become another n, n number of time. So what? data structures can we use to like make it a little more optimal well at first i thought maybe a heap would work and we'll just pop off whenever it's greater but the problem with that is we can imagine that if we had like a seven here and we pop off six when we get to two and add two there then we've forgotten about six right so we can't use a heap what we'll have to do is use some sort of sorted list here what we'll do is like have a sorted list and we'll add one and we'll just add six and each time we insert that's going to be a log n time complexity and what we'll do is do a binary search to check to see where this number belongs to. And however many numbers there are to the left of it, we could uh, figure that's going to be the number of numbers we can add here. Okay, so uh, let's begin by first from sorted containers, import sorted list. And what we'll do is initialize a sorted list, just call that S. And we're going to store our output and 4n in nums, but we're going to move backwards. We're going to do a binary search. We'll use the bisect left function uh, with our sorted list. And we'll search for our n. And I'm, I believe I might have to do it like mm, sorted list bisect left, and we'll get our answer, and we'll add that to our output, and then we'll add to our sorted list whatever number this is, and finally we can just return our output, but make sure that this is reversed because we're going backwards. Okay, so let's see if this works. Or the containers, it's our container. Contain, oh, those containers, not containers. Okay, it looks like it's working, so let's submit that. And come on, barely, there we go. So that's gonna be an n log n time complexity because we move through n and this sorted list is gonna be log n every time we do a bisect left and do an insert here. Now there is one other method we could use. We could use a binary index tree <clears throat> rather than a sorted list. Uh, I'm not going to go too into it because it'll take too long. Uh, but basically, if we have a binary index tree, what we can do is store the index indexes of the numbers. If we had sorted this, what are, what's the index number? And we'll use that index number as the index inside the array. So if we had like six, five, I don't know, two, one, each one of these are gonna be represented by the number it would be in if we sorted it. So this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, this would be four. Uh, and all we have to do now is, uh, see if we have like repeating numbers, like two, this would be two as well. And we can use some sort of array to store how many we've had in here at, at this point. So each one of these index points represents uh, the index point here 
and each time we see one, we can just increase it. So at one, um, say we increase that, increase that to one, then we increase, increase this to one, and then this to two. And each time we just search, all right, how many at two here, what's the sum of everything to the left here? And that would, like here would be like one, right? And luckily using this query would be um, log n time as well. So let's do try doing this. Uh, what we'll need to do is first sort our nums. Well, actually, we got to first make it into a set, then sort it, and then we're going to, well, let's call this E, make some sort of a dictionary. We'll say enumerate this for index number and value and enumerate that, and the value is going to have the index number. Okay, next we're going to create our sorted list not sorted of list, I'm sorry, our, our binary index tree. And this will call B, the IT of what? We need to pass in the length of E here, right? All right, so everything else should pretty much be the same, except instead of numbers, we're going to have to uh, create an indexes, we'll call it indexes. And this will say for n in nums, what is the E? n was the index value here. And this will be in the same order as nums, right? So now instead of nums, we're going to move through our indexes. And we'll, um, let's see, we are going to first qu query our binary, binary tree, we're going to query, and we pass in our, let's see, index value. And I believe I need to add one here. Could be wrong, but let's, let's see. And our delta. Our delta is just going to be 1 each time. All right. Now we query that, and we append our answer, and then we add to our binary tree. We'll update. Oh, wait. This is, this is right. Sorry. This would be i. Oh, man. Let's see. Update i plus 1, 1, and this would just be i. Query i. I believe everything else should remain the same. Let's see if this works first. Okay, that looks like it's working, so let's submit it. Hmm. Oh, there we go, accepted. So it's the same idea, really. Uh, the only thing now that we're doing is using the index number as the array value here inside of our binary index tree. Because if we used the number itself, well, that wouldn't work because we could have negative numbers as well. So. Yeah, same idea. I, I believe this ends up becoming, I actually think it's the same time complexity. It's n log n, or it might be n log whatever the length of uh, however many numbers we have is. So that could be different, n, n log m maybe. All right, well, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching my channel. Uh, remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.